Donna, the most important part in all of this is that there were four children inside of this home. We have been told by the police department that all four kids are out, which is a great thing. Now, during all these adoption hearings, they mentioned that there are more than 300 kids just in our state alone waiting to be adopted. Hey, Priya, Sean, good morning to both of you. Thousands of people are going to be covering this football field for just a fantastic event that, as you mentioned, not only raises money for families against narcotics, but also, probably more importantly, raises awareness. This man stole pasta, a four-foot python, by shoving him down his pants. I'm usually not at a loss for words, but there's a lot of things that I wish I could say on TV, but we're going to have the FCC fine. All right, let's do it. This one, this one. He said just one. <laughs> well, you can race. I'll probably lose, though. Although my weight might actually help with the gravity. We ready? All right, here we go. In three, two, one, go. Oh. <laughs> Now, please welcome to the stage, Macomb County native and WDIV reporter, Nick Manasali. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You know, I could easily win a Pulitzer Prize. Nobody would remember that. They would just remember that video over and over and over again. I gotta tell you, it really did hurt. Welcome to the 9th Annual State of Macomb County. I am honored and happy to be here for multiple reasons. Number one, I've got a couple of parking ticket issues and there's a whole line of judges here. You're gonna take care of that for me, right? Show of hands, Judge Fuka, somebody's gotta take care of me. <laughs> Nobody will fuss up to it. Also, if you haven't heard probably the number one reason you're here, there's free food afterwards. Why wouldn't you wanna be here? Also, coming in at a close third, I have made Macomb my home. And no, they did not pay me to say that. I was born in Mount Clemens, which is now McLaren Macomb, raised in Warren and Sterling Heights, graduated from Stevenson High School. Any alums? Yeah, go Titans. My career, though, actually took me to Grand Rapids and then a transfer to Sacramento, California. The number one question I get about my job, you were in California and you came back to Michigan? Yes, of course. Number one, if you're Italian, you have to live in Macomb County. Rule number one. Yes, where's my fellow Italians at? No, seriously, we came back because of family. I got married. I started my family on the West Coast, but there's nothing like having grandma and grandpa on both sides right down the road. And at the risk of sounding cheesy, my wife, Jen, and I wanted to raise our family here because of the people here in Macomb County. At times, it kind of feels like we're all one big giant family with that crazy Uncle Mark Hackle at the dinner table just telling some very strange stories. Now, to pull back the curtain for you a little bit at Local 4, I work the morning show. Anybody want to guess what time I have to get up for work? 2 a.m. I know, there's a whole lot of Red Bulls. I should probably buy some stock. For half of the day, I'm where the action is. You saw some of it. Sometimes sad situations, sometimes necessities, sometimes awful situations. But the other, other half of that day, you're going to find me usually in Macomb County because there's always something happening here that is unique, that is fun, wild. It's just newsworthy most of the time. Now, I live in Clinton Township. The photographer that I work with lives in Macomb Township. Now, almost on a daily basis, I feel terrible for this guy. His name is Mike because he gets up. He drives from Macomb Township to downtown Detroit, gets our equipment, gets the live truck, then usually drives to Macomb County for whatever story we're going to cover, then drives back downtown to drop off all the equipment, and then drives back to Macomb Township. That's almost a daily thing for him. Oh, well. We actually often joke that I should probably build a, like a Macomb County Bureau. I've got a couple of concerns with the Macomb County Bureau, though. Number one, I can almost guarantee J.P. Rea or John Swickler would be following me around with one of those Make Macomb Your Home banners. Couldn't get away from. 
And number two, and you can attest to this, if there's a TV camera around, somehow Mark Hackle's gonna be there too. <laughs> I swear, he's got the Sheriff's Department tracking us wherever we're going. In all reality though, Mark, he's been in the news a lot because of all of the great things happening right here in Macomb County. In fact, let's recap 2019. and gentlemen, please welcome lifelong residents and advocate of Macomb County, your executive, Mr. Mark Hackle. I look forward to this day every time I get done from the entire year. I, mean, I get excited about this because we get to celebrate Macomb County, and it is exciting. And uh, obviously, as Nick mentioned, I love a crowd, I love cameras, and I like microphones. In fact, I have two tonight. So with that being said, um, i got to back up a little bit. Nick, uh, thanks for getting us started with that video montage. Um, I found it very interesting. I'm, I'm actually a little concerned because I'm sitting here watching it backstage. I'm thinking to myself, you folks are going to go home with that thought in your mind of him going down that slide. And uh, you remember the beginning part of that? He said something about his weight will help with the gravity. It did not, okay? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, Nick, if that happened to be one of those X Games, uh, I guess if you will, uh, kind of ski slope things or whatever, the air you got on that would have got you a 10 on the scorecard, okay? And way to stick the landing too, by the way. Uh, the other concern was the issue dealing with that uh, snake. I don't know if you caught that, a python named Pasta. And uh, what the guy do with it, I'm kind of worried that when I'm done tonight, you're going to be thinking about Nick going on that slide and a python named Pasta being shoved down the front of some guy's pants here in Macomb County. So, Nick, I'm going to try to outdo you somehow. Uh, but you know what? I really want to thank Nick and the news reporters, in particular Nick, for covering Macomb County and kind of helping us tell our story. It really is helpful. Uh, but for Nick, most importantly, I want to thank you for making Macomb your home. Ladies and gentlemen, Nick Monticelli. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you.
It is great to be here again at the Center for the Performing Arts uh, on the wonderful campus of one of my alma maters, and I'm a proud graduate of Macomb Community College. And I want to take a moment to thank Jim Sawyer, President Jim Sawyer of the college here, for giving us his team and of his time and using this facility once again. Jim, thank you very much. Wonderful job. Your team is great. Where's Jim at? He's hanging out here somewhere. He is here. I saw him backstage. At any rate, um, I also want to thank our presenting sponsor this evening. Uh, actually, it's Ascension Macomb, Oakland. And, uh, are they in the house? So, so, as well as the many other sponsors who are listed in your program. Um, and to the Macomb and Sterling Heights Chambers, thank you for helping us put this program on together. Both these organizations, by the way, happen to have new leadership. Uh, Kelly Lavati from the Macomb Chamber and Stacy Zarco at the Sterling Heights Chambers. Ladies, if you would please stand up and be recognized. Where are we hiding at? Right here on everyone. We have many chambers in Macomb County that do great work for our business folks, and I, I can't thank them enough. Uh, these two ladies were very helpful in working with my staff and putting this together. Um, I also want to recognize, if I may, some of our state and regional partners who are here with us this evening. First, help me welcome the Attorney General of the State of Michigan, Dana Nessel. I know she's here. The Adjutant General of the State of Michigan, a good friend of mine, Major General Paul Rogers. General. And on behalf of Governor Gretchen Whitmer, the Community Affairs Director, Melanie Brown. No? Thank you. Good buddy of mine, we've known each other since our law enforcement days, the Wayne County Executive, Warren Evans. And out of the city of Detroit, representing Mayor Mike Duggan, the Chief Operating Officer, Hakeem Berry. My partner from the north, St. Clair County Chairman of the Board, Mr. Jeff Moore. <laughs> Jeff, thanks for getting dressed up today. Probably you're in uh, shorts, flip flops, and kind of a ripped up, torn up t shirt. Looking good today, man. So that's how he does his state of the county. So, Oakland County Executive, newly appointed County Executive, Mr. Dave Coulter. Dave? And I got to say, Dave's going to do a great job, and there's a reason why. He was born and raised in Macomb County, St. Clair Shores, so <laughs> Oakland County had a good guy there, man. Anyway. And if I may appoint a privilege, uh, uh, we had the passing of one of our counterparts, one of the uh, regional big four that's been around for a long time. Um, and again, he not only was he a, a good guy to work with for me, uh, he was actually a friend. And uh, I got to really know him and uh, really appreciate him as a person. And uh, I just wanted to, even though he normally is here at these events, uh, he is not here with us today, but in spirit. And I know that his family is here as well. And I think they're here this evening, and I'm not sure exactly where they're placed. But uh, thank you for coming, and thank you for sharing Brooks with us. I know some of you were chuckling about the shoe tying episode. That was Woodward Boulevard during one of the phrase. I was tying Brooks's shoe because he was too cold. He couldn't bend down to tie it himself. Unbeknownst to me, I thought it was just one of those things in passing. No, he decided to, at an event, knowing I was coming over in Oakland County to this event, had a sports coat on, opened up the sports coat, and that picture was on a T-shirt. <laughs> yes, yes. What a playful gentleman he was. So, but, but interesting... Interesting enough, what he was telling people at the event, and uh, these were his words. Yeah, he didn't like his morning task, but boy, you should have seen what his afternoon assignment was. So, so I, know, I, I know he's up there, and whoever's dealing with him, God bless him. <laughs> he got a lot of work there. So they're probably rethinking pulling that number. So look at it, he's not even here, and I'm still picking on him, you know? That's because it's going to be a state of the county, and Dave's going to be a little more kind of judicious. He hasn't had to run for election yet. So he's going to be a little kinder to me when I show up to his. Brooks, he would have beat the living daylights out of me. So um, several countywide elected officials are also here, and I'm going to run through them. Our public works commissioner, Candace Miller, Fred Miller, the clerk, our treasurer, Larry Rocca, prosecutor, Eric Smith, and our sheriff, Anthony Wickersham. <laughs> I 
Also with us are members of the Macomb County Board of Commissioners, led by Chairman Bob Smith, and many judges from the circuit, district, and probate courts, led by Chief Judge James Piernak. Thank you for coming. And I noticed when there was a procession coming in, they said, you know, now comes some of the judges from the circuit, uh, uh, probate, and district court. And I, only, I can tell you, I already know it. Viviano was walking in here. The chief, actually, the Supreme Court Justice Viviano was walking in here, and I know he was thinking to himself, uh, "Hey, what about the Supreme Court? They weren't mentioned." <laughs> Supreme Court Justice Dave Viviano, front and center. <laughs> I'm in trouble. I just know it. He's seated, he's seated next to my brother. Those two are hecklers. So any heckling is coming from right up here. I, I, I see that coming. Um, thanks again for for being here. And finally. I'd like to thank my dad and my wonderful, beautiful wife, Tracy, for being here as well. Thank you. Now, let's turn to the state of Macomb County. I'd like to begin by reviewing the six key metrics we use to track the county's progress. The first metric is population and diversity. Macomb County continues to be one of the fastest growing counties in the state of Michigan. Our population jumped by nearly 11,000 residents last year which was an increase, an annual increase, probably the largest we've seen in a decade. And that puts our county's population here at an all-time high of 875,000 people. And several factors account for this growth. For example, the majority of our seniors are choosing to stay in the community, with many of them remaining in their homes or moving to some of the wonderful senior living facilities we have here in the county. We're also seeing increases in the number of families. And the county's birth rate has risen to the highest it's been in more than a decade. And finally, immigration continues to drive population growth. Today, one in nine people living in this county was born outside of the United States. And these new Americans add value to our county. They bring much needed skills to our workforce, they have high employment rates, and they're economic drivers in our small business communities. Immigration adds to our racial and ethnic diversity which is hitting all time highs here in Macomb County each and every year, and we welcome that. The second metric is educational attainment. In just one year, Macomb County's educational profile has added more than 10,000 associate, baccalaureate, and graduate degrees. We're also seeing an increase in the professional certifications, especially in the high demand fields such as cybersecurity, robotics, IT, and healthcare. These added credentials are having a positive impact on our third metric, which is jobs. Jobs are again on the rise. This year, Macomb County reached the historic high with more than 460,000 residents in the labor force. Our unemployment rate is down to 4%, which is a full percentage point lower than the state of Michigan. At these levels, it's no surprise that many of the new jobs we have are becoming difficult to fill combination of record levels of educational attainment and employment has had a positive impact on our fourth metric, which is income. This past year, Macomb's median household income increased to about $62,000. 10 years ago, Macomb County, we were below the state average. Today, Macomb families are 10% higher than the state average. This restored spending power is producing significant benefits to our local economy and enhancing the overall quality of life in our community. The fifth metric is housing. As might be expected, improved household income is driving increased demand for housing. In 2018, we added nearly 5,200 new housing units in Macomb County. And the median home value increased by more than $29,000 this past year. That's a 20% increase in just one year. And finally, the sixth metric. Fiscal stability. We continue to focus on financial responsibility. This past year, we made it a priority to invest in our employees, technology, and facilities to better serve the public. Our Human Resources Department implemented a market-driven classification and compensation plan, which allowed us to create a baseline for wages and benefits. And our Finance Department, they were able to reaffirm our enviable AA-plus bond rating. This could not have been done without the cooperation of our countywide elected officials, our courts, our department heads, and with the support of the Board of Commissioners. Together, these six metrics give us an indication of community vitality, and they're all pointing 
in the right direction. In Macomb County, our population is growing and becoming more diverse. Educational attainment continues to improve. Our workforce is at record high levels. Household income is 10% above the state average. The housing market is strong. And county government is financially stable. I'm very proud of the condition of our county. And I want to thank each and every one of you for helping make this county what it is today. One of the reasons we track these metrics is to help us better respond to emerging community needs. Here are just a few of the examples of what's been done this past year. Our county clerk, Fred Miller, deployed his mobile clerk's office program, making access to vital records more convenient. Our county treasurer, Larry Rocca, is helping to keep hundreds of families in their homes by leveraging more than $5 million through the Step Forward Michigan program. Our health department received a $270,000 grant from the state of Michigan to expand the Nurse Family Partnership program which empowers first-time moms to transform their lives and create better futures for themselves and for their babies. Our medical examiner's office received national re-accreditation. And McComb's Model Head Start program brought in more than $10 million in federal funds and is now offering classes in 19 of our 21 school districts across the county. Emergency management continues to keep McComb County at the forefront of school safety. With the help of the Department of Justice grant, we are conducting risk and vulnerability assessments for our local schools. To date, more than 50 emergency operations plans have been developed, and more school districts are connecting their video systems to ComTech, allowing first responders real-time visual access in the case of an emergency. We partnered with McLaren and expanded our Fresh to You mobile food program, and our Animal Control Division launched a new digital pet tagging system that can be synced with any smartphone to reunite a lost pet with its owner. And to date, we have provided more than 12,000 tags. Our Office of Senior Services they delivered more than 430,000 meals on wheels. And by the way, this program is always looking for more volunteers if you're interested. These are just a handful of the many emerging programs and initiatives that are helping us reshape the way we deliver services here in Macomb County. And I want to take this opportunity to thank all of our countywide elected officials, as well as department heads, for, for having the insight and realizing what needs to be done to help make things better here in Macomb County. Now, let's look at our economy. Macomb County has become a leader in technology and talent. Our business community has leveraged its history of design and production, making us the epicenter for product innovation. Macomb is one of the few places in the world where you can find this concentration of skills and facilities. And the proof is in the numbers. We have a $43 billion economy here in Macomb County, with nearly 18,000 businesses employing 360,000 individuals. Job growth in the county is outpacing both state and national averages, which has made our county's workforce larger than four states. We've had 10 consecutive years of wage growth and while this economic vitality is driven by several industries, year after year, manufacturing stands out. Manufacturing alone is a $13 billion industry in Macomb County. We are home to more than 1,600 manufacturers who employ more than 71,000 workers. Nationally, over the past five years, job growth in this industry has been at 3.4%. Here in Macomb County, it's been 11%. In fact, this year, the White House Council of Economic Advisors authored a study regarding nationwide employment and productivity in manufacturing. Out of more than 3,100 counties across the nation, where do you think Macomb County ranked in manufacturing job growth? Yeah, you knew it was coming there. How about number one, baby? Number one. Macomb County was number one in job growth over the past two years, and that is the sense of pride that we have here, because if you look back, I'm going to tell you, things were bleak eight, ten years ago, but what a turn of events we have seen here. You know, this trend we tend to find is fueled by several major investments. FCA committed a total of $1.5 billion in 1,400 new jobs at Warren Truck. That investment will support the continued assembly of the Ram 1500 and the all-new Jeep Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. And as if that isn't enough, FCA also invested $245 million at Warren Stamping 
and 160 million at the sterling stamping. We're also witnessing impressive growth in our supplier base. Companies like MMI Engineered Solutions, Michigan Production Engineering, Concord Tool and Manufacturing, and Arlington Industries have invested more than 400, four, actually $40 million in new facilities and are adding several hundred new jobs. These are just a few of the dozens of automotive suppliers that are helping to reshape the industry. However, we are not without challenges. Changing markets, and as well as trade uncertainty, have led to some difficult corporate decisions. For example, many of you heard General Motors announced the phase out of the Warren transmission. And Ford is examining the future of the Romeo engine plant. And while final decisions have not been made, I can assure you Macomb County is committed to repurposing these major industrial sites if necessary. Working with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation, the Center of Automotive Research, and most importantly, our local partners, we're developing economic impact studies to identify highest and best uses for these potentially vacant sites. Know that we are exploring all options to protect the economic foundation of all of our communities here in Macomb County. You know, over the past decade, we have seen more than $10 billion of economic investment in Macomb County. And while our attention might be focused on major corporations, it is important to note that this economic stimulus isn't due to just a few of our companies, but it is the shared commitment of nearly 200 leading edge organizations that have made Macomb their home. As a result, Macomb County has become a global leader in advanced manufacturing. And they're also becoming a leader in information and technology, as well as cybersecurity. The county is now home to nearly 600 IT and cyber firms who employ more than 10,000 individuals. And you want to hear something really impressive? The national growth rate in this industry is 9%. Here in Macomb, it's 84%. That's pretty incredible. And this expanding network of innovators is leveraging future-focused technologies and cultivating a new workforce with capabilities that are changing the way business is done. And as I have said before, from concept to consumer, no place does it better. Defense. Defense is another core industry in Macomb County. Without question, Macomb is the defense capital of the Midwest, and someday we're forging ahead, we'll become the defense capital of the world, if there's anything I can do about that. I say that because today we have 650 defense contractors employing 11,000 highly skilled workers, and their economic impact is impressive. This year, more than 5,000 defense contracts were awarded to Macomb County firms, totaling $3.4 billion, another record year. These contracts illustrate that Macomb County continues to be Michigan's premier center for cutting edge defense work. And speaking of defense, another one of our assets is Selfridge. This past spring, General Rogers appointed Brigadier General Rolf Mahman as the new commanding general at the base. And ladies and gentlemen, the general happens to be here, so please help me welcome General Mahman. Thank you for your service. We all recognize the importance of Selfridge uh, to our nation's defense, yet we recognize its importance to this community. That is why I'm pleased to announce that with the support of our planning department, the county received a $266,000 grant from the Department of Defense to plan for long-term sustainability of Selfridge. This will allow the county to engage leaders from the base and the surrounding communities to develop land use guidelines to protect the mission and the operation of the base well into the future. And speaking of the future, we are not done with those F-35s. <laughs> Last week, we got a big boost when our state's congressional delegation sent a bipartisan letter, yes, I said it, a bipartisan letter to the Secretary of the Air Force asking for reconsideration. There has been a continuation of leadership in this effort from Vadney and Slocum to Rogers and Mammon. I gotta tell you, Governor Snyder was on board. And just this morning, I got a call from our governor, Gretchen Whitmer, who said, we're with you. We're gonna fight the fight. We're gonna try to get those F-35s here to Michigan. And I couldn't be more pleased because we are relentless in the pursuit of bringing those F-35s to Selfridge. Melody. <laughs> Tell the governor I said thank you. 
Thank you. It's well known that McCollum's defense industry has a rich history and a sense of pride for making things that protect those who protect us. Well, as a county, we are becoming a place known for serving those who have served us. Home to nearly 46,000 veterans, we are deeply committed to serving their needs. For example, our Enhanced Veterans Village has allowed our Veterans Affairs Office to expand its programming. We now offer specialized benefit management, veterans courts, targeted job training, and financial empowerment programs. I strongly encourage any veteran to contact our Veterans Office if they need help navigating the system. Because I know this, Laura Rios and her folks are standing by to serve you. Thank you all. Last year, we announced two major veterans initiatives coming to Macomb, uh, a, a new veterans home, as well as a traumatic brain injury center. And uh, just to update you, both projects are moving along incredibly well. In fact, construction is now underway on the 128 units of Bill Manor Veterans Home in Chesterfield Township. Uh, when complete, the veterans and their families will no longer have to go to Grand Rapids uh, for, for their long-term care. And equally exciting is the opening of the new Eisenhower Center at Southridge. The Eisenhower Center is known nationally for its excellence in treating veterans who have suffered traumatic brain injuries. And when it is fully operational, the center will provide treatment, counseling, and rehabilitation services. And there are also plans to open up facilities on the site as well. Here in Macomb County, we remain fully committed to serving those who have served us, our 46,000 veterans and their families. <laughs> Healthcare is another rapidly growing industry in Macomb County. Ascension Macomb Oakland, which actually is our presenting sponsor, opened their $48 million hospital expansion in Warren, increasing the number of private rooms and increasing patient satisfaction. Leclerc and Lacombe is investing $68 million in its emergency department and trauma center in Mount Clemens. Beaumont announced plans this year to construct its largest outpatient center, which will be located in Lenox Township. And very soon, Henry Ford Lacombe will break ground on a $250 million hospital tower in Clinton Township. While these investments provide a substantial economic and employment boost to the county, the real benefit comes from enhancing access to state-of-the-art health care closer to home. Keeping patients and their families closer together gives them a peace, sense of peace of mind and aids in the healing process. And I'd like to thank these major health care systems for their strong commitment to enhancing the quality of life here in Macomb County. There's no question that there's a vibrant economy here in Macomb, but we still have a major challenge, and I think it's not just here in Macomb, it's around the region and probably the state. And uh, basically, that is talent. The ability for a community uh, to attract and retain businesses is dependent upon the pool of talent. Um, I mentioned earlier that we had a large number of jobs in Macomb County that are going unfilled. Well, based on current postings, there are 33,000 jobs open here with opportunities in Macomb County. That's why last year, county launched the Fueling to Talent Pipeline initiative. Our goal is to expose students to emerging career possibilities and then guide them through educational pathways to leading to meaningful employment. Our efforts include convening the four next generation learning academies at both Romeo as well as Centerline High Schools, where we are connecting classrooms with workplaces to give students real world experience. We partnered with the ISD and all of our local school districts to organize the largest manufacturing day in the state of Michigan. We provided 2,000 students an on-site experience at 60 host companies. And this last year, we announced plans for a first-of-its-kind robotics collaboration and innovation center, which will provide a collaborative learning environment for students from all around the county. And they can learn from industry professionals as well as from one another. The center opens next year and will give students a practice field for first robotics, tooling and fabrication labs, STEM programming, and access to mentors from top automotive, defense, manufacturing, and technology firms. It will become a unique resource for training the next generation of our high-tech workforce. 
And I want to thank Vicki Rad, our Director of Planning and Development, for making that happen here in Macomb County. Our future-focused mindset is not just limited to developing talent. Macomb County is also looking at how our infrastructure will respond to the needs of tomorrow. And our biggest problem is the condition of our roads. Pardon my surprise, I hear it every day. Our Department of Roads is basically responsible for 1,700 lane miles here in Macomb County. And 70% of those are in poor condition. If you add to that the 41 bridges that we, we need to prepare, there are 41 bridges in Macomb County that need replacing. We have a $2.3 billion problem today. And at current funding levels, this problem would take 14 years to fix. And we all know over the next 14 years, this problem is going to compound. Folks, there isn't one road or one bridge that we can't fix if we have the funding. You've heard me say this before. Fixing the funding fixes the roads. So what needs to be done? Our legislature needs to change the 70-year-old road funding formula known as Act 51. <laughs> that formula continues to provide funding based on the length of a road rather than the utilization of it, whereas the formula should be focused on population density, road usage, and true lane miles. We know there's a need for additional state funding, but if these new funds continue to filter through this old formula, we will never solve the problem. The state has been admiring this problem for far too long, and it's time for action. Fix Act 51 before, before that happens. Yeah, that's my team back there. Funny guys. <laughs> we'll be talking about that later. I may have a few openings in my staff. <laughs> so, <laughs> but let me, let me give you an example of what can be done when you have proper funding. Mound Road it serves as one of the country's most significant economic corridors. And yet, in my estimation, it was one of the country's worst roads. Last year, we received a $97 million grant from the U.S. Department of Transportation to completely reconstruct Mound Road from 696 to M59. Our objective is to not only rebuild the road, but to develop one of the nation's most intelligent transportation systems by incorporating smart traffic signals, connected vehicle technologies, safer designs, and real-time traffic flow monitoring. Next year, we will complete the planning and engineering phase, and construction will start on this project in 2021. When complete, this roadway will be a model for intelligent transportation systems, enhancing our current position as a national leader in mobility. And why do I say that? Because we already have 630 connected traffic signals. 260 real-time cameras, and 300 roadside units, all transmitting real-time information to our ComTech Communications Operations Center, making our roads here in Macomb County smarter and safer for everyone. <laughs> Macomb County is also becoming a leader in infrastructure that impacts our environment. Our Public Works Commissioner Candace Miller is leading the way on two projects. One is the Sterling Relief Drain, where we are using $1.8 million in grants to restore one of the most critical drains in the county by utilizing comprehensive daylighting and greening techniques. This impressive engineering project will include the planting of thousands of trees, and one of the things that Candace is most excited about is the monarch butterfly habitat. And she'll explain why. You can see her at the, uh, the, the, the feeding trough later on in the back over here. <laughs> and by the way, I know that's why you're all here, okay? I have a brother, I told him it was about 40 minutes speech or whatever, and I can tell you right now, he's actually got a stopwatch, and him and Dave keep bumping each other. Where's he at now? Where's he at? They're normally used to programs from, you know, for baseball games or something like that. So uh, the other project that Candace is working on is the Chapman and Pumping Station. And uh, located at Nine Mile and Jefferson, if you're familiar with this, uh, this retention basin is the last line 
we consider last line of defense in protecting Lake St. Clair from untreated wastewater. Uh, construction is gonna begin next year on this project, and it's a $30 million redesign of the structure. Uh, without a doubt, uh, it's gonna double the storage capacity and reduce the number of annual sewage discharges into the lake. These two projects will have a significant impact. Yeah, go ahead, go for it. Who wants that? I'm with you. I'm with you. These two projects will have, without question, a significant impact on improving the, the actual um, quality of our water and uh, as well, obviously, the cleanliness of our water. And so we're excited about that. And Candace, I can't thank you enough for your efforts, everything you're doing with your staff, by the way. And speaking of water quality, uh, two of our most treasured assets, I talk about them all the time, are Lake St. Clair and our mainstream Main Street, I tagged it that, uh, the Clinton River. My first year as county executive, we made it a priority to champion our freshwater assets. And what we did was we, we launched the Blue Economy Initiative with the intention of improving water quality as well as public access. And uh, nowhere, nowhere is our success more evident than with the Clinton River. I don't know if many of you know this, but the Clinton River was once designated as one of the most polluted and unusable rivers in the entire state. For decades, as our county grew, we did not make it a priority to deploy management practices that would protect our river. In the 1970s, as a matter of fact, that river itself was classified as a dead waterway with no substantial fish resources. There were no fish in there. And ultimately, it led to it becoming designated as a federal area of concern. Faced with this monumental challenge, we began by working with our community partners uh, to create an action plan which would eliminate combined sewer overflows, divert stormwater runoff, clean up contaminated sites, and respond to illicit discharges. To date, we have invested $30 million in grant funds to clean the river. Next, we cleared the river. Studies concluded the river would never be a recreational resource because it was virtually impassable. There were more than 100 log jams filled with debris. Working with hundreds of volunteers, we cleared up every one of them. And finally, we connected with the river by providing access. Once there was very limited access to our river, but now this 33-mile waterway is open to the community with launch sites and parks. Today, there are now nine public access points on that river, and four of these are universally accessible making the Clinton River one of the state's most accessible water trails. And I want to give a shout out to two of the liveries that are out there here in Macomb County. Many of you may have recognized if you, anybody have been on the, the Rifle River, been down there before? You get a shout out, Rifle River? You probably remember like uh, White's Canoe Rental? That goes back in my day. We, we were there many a time. We didn't have any of those here in Macomb County. How upsetting, how disturbing. And now we have two liveries, the Clinton River Canoe and Kayak and Outdoor Adventures are providing opportunities for families and people to recreate on our Clinton River here today. And not only are they out there doing that, they were the folks that were very instrumental in helping us clear up those hundreds of log jams that we had here in Macomb County. And along with them and many of our other partners, we celebrated the progress this past year by hosting the inaugural Clinton River Runs Wild. Now, it's not the St. Clair River thing that uh, my, my Jeff Bohm is used to, like, I mean, that's a wild party they have, okay? I'm just gonna tell you. <laughs> and I know Jeff attends that thing. I mean, they're on the St. Clair River traversing down. I, I feel bad for Tim Donnellan, the sheriff out there. He's gotta police that thing. And I know, I know this guy probably ducks every time he comes by with one of their boats, doesn't wanna admit to being on it. But we celebrated it by doing what we call this Clinton River Runs Wild. It was the first one. We, we did it because we wanted to showcase the incredible transformation that has taken place. And folks, this is how the river looks today. People have always used rivers to help tell their stories. Rivers have occupied our imagination and taught us lessons about life, the passage of time, the need to keep pushing forward. It's no surprise, really. After all, anyone who's spent a peaceful afternoon sitting on the banks of a great river knows why they're such a powerful symbol. With rushing waters flowing toward their destination, constant and unrelenting, a river's journey mirrors our own. But these days, we don't rely on our rivers quite the way we did when they gave life to our cities and towns. 
and that makes it easy to take them for granted. That's the story of the Clinton River, a beautiful and engaging waterway that fell victim to neglect and misuse. And after many years, became one of the most polluted in Michigan. But now, because of a countywide effort, the river has been restored. The tires, trash, fallen trees removed, and wildlife has returned in vast numbers to their natural habitat. From De Quinter to Lake St. Clair, the river's 33 miles are open, ready, and waiting to be explored. Whether you're riding its current in a kayak, paddling along in a canoe, or just taking in its natural beauty on a Sunday stroll, the Clinton River is once again clean, clear, and connected. And that's a story worth telling. What a remarkable environmental transformation. And you know, it's often said that success breeds success. Well, I'm excited tonight to, to announce uh, as a result of all the success, uh, we were able to, with the assistance of FCA and a few other sponsors, um, convince them to put forth the money to help us add two new access points to that river here in Macomb County. One which will be in Clinton Township and the other in Harrison Township. You know, and quality of life is uh, also influenced by public health as well as public safety. Uh, some of you may recall that about two years ago, I talked about the need to address the growing opioid crisis that we're seeing, not only in the county, but throughout the country. I announced that evening that the county had joined a handful of other communities in pursuing litigation against manufacturers and distributors of opioid medications. In fact, we joined with Detroit at that time, and I think just prior to that, uh, Oakland and Wayne County joined together uh, with that litigation. And today, there are over 2,500 communities that are out pursuing opioid-related litigation. I am proud that we were on the forefront of this litigation, uh, as well as our regional counterparts here. And uh, while I think sometimes it's easy to assume uh, that this litigation was about money, the real benefit comes from changing societal attitudes and business practices. That was the push. And there's evidence to show that, that it is working. For example, over the past couple of years, the public has become keenly aware of the risks associated with the use and abuse of opioids. And we're finding that many physicians have changed their prescribing practices. And drug distributors are almost closely monitoring what they're doing with their sales. Manufacturers are changing their marketing techniques. And a growing number of communities are hosting drug take-back programs, like the ones our health department uh, held a short time ago. But you know, best of all, here in Macomb County, we have seen, as a result of this, a decline in opioid-related arrests and opioid-related deaths. That was, I think, our main focus. The money will follow. And we'll take that, too, by the way, from the distributors and manufacturers. Um, but there are also a couple other things that I wanted to talk about, um, and they're related issues that I've discussed in the past. And one was the need for improvements at our jail, and the other need is for reforms in a criminal justice system. And over the past two years, the county, we had the study uh, where we were studying both the needs and developed a comprehensive plan for addressing them. The results call for expanding the capacity of the jail by building a totally new jail. But something unexpected happened during the time of the study the average daily population at the jail began to decline and has now reached its lowest level in decades. So the question is, is this a temporary decline or the beginning of a new standard? From the evidence we have, we believe it's becoming a new standard. So why is this happening? It seems to be from a combination of factors. For example, our judges are leading the way toward finding more effective alternatives to incarceration. More of them are believing, as I do, that confinement should not be a substitute for treatment. Our judges have created specialty courts focused on the unique needs of veterans and people with substance abuse and or mental health challenges. And studies show specialty court programs reduce recidivism rates by as much as 50%. 
In addition, our community corrections treatment and monitoring programs are providing alternatives to incarceration. Service agencies such as FAN and CARE have developed programs like Hope Not Handcuffs, preventing needless arrests. It is anticipated that the recently enacted Raise the Age legislation will remove more youthful offenders from the adult system. And the county's new public defender's office will provide for more legal counsel at first appearance and reduce pretrial jail time for nonviolent offenders. All of this has given us an opportunity to rethink the original plan for a new jail. Realizing it may no longer be a capacity issue, there may be an opportunity to focus on supporting the reforms that we are seeing by renovating and or repurposing current facilities. In working with the sheriff, we're continuing those conversations. The bottom line is, criminal justice reform is showing signs of improvement in Macomb County, and it holds real promise for our future. Credit goes to the judiciary. Sheriff Wickersham and his office, Liz Darg, I know you're here, the under sheriff, as well as the other leaders in the criminal justice system, as well as human service organizations, for implementing innovative practices that are helping improve efficiency and effectiveness within our criminal justice system here in Macomb County. Thank you all for that. All in all, it has been a very good year in, here in Macomb County. Our population is growing and becoming more diverse. Our labor force is at record highs. Manufacturing job growth leads the nation. Defense contracts hit new record highs. Healthcare systems are making major investments in Macomb County. We're finding new ways to develop talent, educational attainment, family income, and housing values continue to increase. Infrastructure projects are improving our economy and our environment. And we are working with our schools to help keep our kids safe. It has been a good year. Now, every year I like to kind of end or close uh, my remarks by highlighting something uh, unique uh, about the county that often goes unnoticed. And uh, this year I want to shine a light on the great work our Animal Control Division does with uh, the amazing rescue organizations that are out there. Together they are focused on rescuing animals and then they get to work on trying to get these animals adopted. Well, our director, Jeff Randazzo, came up with a very unique and very cute idea to help showcase the animals in our shelter and uh, let people know that they're available for adoption. It's almost like a, a, a video uh, match.com, if you will, for pet lovers. And uh, it's called Kitty Camp. And this dang thing got so much attention that since May of uh, this past year, this year, May of this year, there have been thousands of people that have tuned into that. I wished I got that many people going to my Facebook or, or tuning into our other social media. Thousands of people are viewing this thing, and it's amazing, and it's really been helpful. And uh, even the media uh, thought it was kind of unique, and uh, it got a lot of media attention. And with that being said, let's take a look at how well it was covered by Channel 4. So there's this new reality show, and it is as close as the fingertips on your computer or your laptop. Macomb County Animal Control has launched this 24-7 kitty cam. And you can watch the antics of a wild and crazy cast of characters. And I need to tell you, some of the drama and the plot twist, oh, as intricate, oh, as intricate as a Real Housewives episode. They call me a domestic long hair, but there's nothing domestic about me. My name is Squeaky, and the squeaky wheel gets the oil. It's not that I'm new to the show. I am the show. Boop. Welcome to the real house cats of Macomb County. There's high drama, but in here, the drama is real. Ace was rescued from a hoarding house with 30 other cats, but hasn't lost his sweetness, even though his life has been rough. They're all fantastic cats, though. Uh, they come into us mostly as strays. Uh, sometimes we get owner surrenders. Misty just got to the cat house. Her owner just kind of left her and didn't think twice about her. And is eking out territory with cat fights that make the real housewives of anywhere else 
look tame. They weren't the friendliest at first, but now they're seeking attention and... <laughs> I don't know where to go from that. <laughs> you can see them all and judge the adoptability for yourself or just enjoy the show when you tune in to the new 24-7, 365 kitty cam that catches all the drama of the cat adoption house inside Macomb County Animal Control. Of course, they all have to establish their place, you know, in the, in the cat world here. The recently launched camera takes you inside what it's like when you await your forever home. And the plot twists are intense as the cats play, sleep, eat, argue, and entertain. Never, never the same here. Each cat is primping and priming for pet adoption day. That's at the shelter tomorrow. Everybody's playing. Yeah. Saving you as much as $200 on pet adoption fees, thanks to a sponsorship from Bissell. And what better way to see before you adopt than to tune into Kitty Cam, the real house cats of Macomb County. Oh, hello, sweetie. Oh, hello, sweetie. Oh, hello, sweetie pie. You guys are making her nervous. It's her big debut. Say hello to Holly. This is Holly. Holly's one of the stars of the show currently. And she is absolutely adorable. And by the way, adoptable. What a great idea during the holidays for those of you that are looking for that last minute gift idea. <laughs> hmm? We were just talking backstage a second ago and kind of laughing about it, thinking Holly's making history right now. This, uh, this may be the first live animal appearance on stage during an annual state of anything. I worry about that, though. I, I, know, I know Warren Evans is saying, you're damn right, that happened on my show. So, so. But I actually stop and think about that. Here I am bringing out the first cat, a live animal. I, I'm sitting there thinking about that right now. I'm going, you know what? If that were to happen in St. Clair County, it would be a, a parrot on uh, Jeff Bohm's shoulder with his flip-flops. Um, I am certain Warren Evans would have a horse uh, probably the song, I Want to Be a Cowboy, because he's riding out onto the stage. That's what he favors. Um, what are you laughing about? You, Dave, you ain't going to do anything right now. you got an election. You're not even sure you're going to win again, for Christ's sake. So you're going to be you're gonna be, you're gonna be, a little nervous. Hey, welcome to the club, baby. If, more, if, if, if Brooks were here, man, I'd be doing the same thing to him. And by the way, if it were Brooks, he'd be riding out on an elephant, okay? Because cause it's got to be bigger. And uh, let's face it, he wants to make sure you know he's a Republican, all right? So... So, so, okay, so, okay, okay, I'm not, okay, I know you're nervous. All right, seriously, though, on behalf of Holly here and all the animals out there looking to be adopted, I just want to say thank you to the rescue organizations. You know, sometimes uh, their efforts go unnoticed, but to this little kitten here and the other rescues, waiting for a loving home, um, their efforts matter. And so thanks again for all the work that you guys do. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff Randazzo, the director of our Animal Control. There you go. Jeff is also the executive producer of the Real House Cats of Macomb County and uh, Kitty Cam. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are as proud as I am of this place we call home. And as you look around, it's the people who make us what we are. And I want to thank all of you for celebrating with us this evening and wish you all a happy and safe holiday season. Thank you so much once again. Thank you. We thank you for joining us this evening. You are invited to continue the celebration at the Lorenzo Cultural Center for a taste of Macomb.